welcome to the God is a Geek podcast. My name's Adam Cook, and you know that because I just said what my name was. It's Wednesday, we're here for you, we're always here for you, because it's a podcast. The beautiful thing about a, co- a podcast, if we just get into this quickly, is that you can listen to it whenever you want, and if you want, you can re-listen to it. But, if you do re-listen to it, beware, the sexy voice of Chris White will be audible again. Hello. Was that wow, that was... Uh, sexy? Or was uh, that just weird? It was, it was, it was, it, I, some you know, column A, column B kind of thing. Um, okay, well, I, Gary I just Bailey talk normally. Is, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, do because Gary Bailey's going to bring the sexy deep voice now. Obviously, uh, I don't know about that. Oh, sexy! I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. Oh, I'm twitching. Oh, I mean, I start. I, 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 mean, I started this Barry by White. <laughs> I started this and I've made myself uncomfortable, which is um, which is more to do with the heat than than Gary's voice. If I'm honest with you, because guys, it's hot again. Yeah, and if you've noticed at all, a you know. little bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit on the warm side, Gaz. You a little bit on the on the, you know, on the warm side. Oh, it's not nice. It's not nice here. Do do you have either of you? Well, Chris, you didn't. I mean, Gaz, we know doesn't like the heat. Chris, do you like the heat? No, I fucking hate it, mate. Hate it. <laughs> So, do you know a, a anyone that, that like is like, oh, do you know anyone that's like, oh, I love it, I love yeah, it, it's yeah, so I do. nice. Every fucker okay. on Facebook, <laughs> oh, it's so hot outside, loving it, going to go and do this, going to the pub, I'm like, fuck that, I just want some, mm. some, some, something cool, I just want to just veg in front of the telly, it's a very American thing. Are we thing. trying to say it's like hot like fire? That was one route to that. I was just going to go with veg in front of the telly. To be fair, you both set that up beautifully. I would, you know, I just because <laughs> I'm on mic, just a gentle golf sort of a golf applause because it's I don't want to speak too it's soon. Fate. Yes, yes. F- Fire Emblem Three Houses. I am allowed to talk about now. Um, I mean, I was allowed to talk about before, but kind of only to myself in a room that no one else was allowed to be in uh, because the preview <laughs> embargo has lifted for Fire Emblem Three Houses and. Uh, well, um, so that sure I, is a big game, lads. Can I just ask something before we stop? Well, you on, Chris. So, I've always can. wanted. I can. Thanks. I've always wanted to get into Fire Emblem, <laughs> yeah. but I've like it's right. pretty big, <laughs> pretty big series. I want to know if mm. I could potentially start playing this and get the same kind of enjoyment out of it as it, as fans that have kind of played it for a while. That sounds like a reviewy question, but I'm going to answer it in a previewy fashion. Yes, um, this <laughs> this game is a fine starting point, cool. but it is also quite. Uh, how else? I don't know. I, I'm just going to say this. I think it's quite different to the other games, while also not being that different. So in the past, I'm trying to think of like when when Fire Emblem first came back big, that 3DS game. Um, which I've forgotten the name of, but the one where everyone suddenly got back on board. Uh, it was a terrific game, and it is a relationship manager style JRPG, but with the Final Fantasy Tactics style grid based, turn based battle system. Okay. Mm. And they kept expanding and expanding and essentially making them bigger and bigger. Um, I still think that the first 3DS one was probably the best one in ages. Three Houses twists the formula slightly. So in those previous games, it was very much like... Do you know how in, in Pokemon, fire beats uh, earth and, and yes. earth beats water? I can't even remember. But, you know, the kind of the kind of combat triangle, right? Yes, yeah. That that was present in Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem, but it was like bows, swords, shields... Sorry, bows, swords, axe, lance, you know, all the kind of military weapons of the era. Yeah. And they all kind of had their own systems in that like i can't even remember them now which one beats what but like you know like, let's just say for argument's sake bow and arrow would beat a flying character because they can attack them, you know that sort of stuff yeah yeah actually i think it was yeah. i think it might have even been lance that beat fl- um, flying i can't remember they've kind of moved away from that in this and it's more class based and without wanting to frighten people and this is ba- i have played more but this I'm only talking about like the first section that I'm allowed to talk about the game this reminds me the most of is kind of the Persona series oh, because it's still got the systems it's still got the combat that you would expect with those twists but the the titular three houses 
this game's kind of like Harry Potter. Like oh. you, you <laughs> take 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 the the intro hour out where you're no kind of this the setup, and then you end up at a school. It's kind of a is more to it than that. But I'm just going to simplify it and say there's a school, and you pick one of the three houses because you're a teacher. Well, you're not. Well, you might be. I'm not even sure. It's it's that complicated. Um, but you are being given a job as a teacher, and you pick one of the three houses to kind of, well, be like head like head teacher of. I, you know, I forget what they call them in Harry Potter, but, you know, like Snape's one and, mm. you know. Yeah. What are they called? Doesn't matter. But within that, there are a load of students and you... <laughs> I've seen interviews where they say you don't have to, but you can micromanage every student. And by that, I mean, let's say a student is good at swords, but they're also okay at axes. You can teach them via play to improve axes and you can change their classes. They take exams. I I don't want to frighten people. I'm frightened and I'm playing it because it is... uh, it just seemed like there's reports like in the in the news that they've been saying how long it is and that and I, and I believe it from what I've played. I haven't finished it, obviously. Um, it's it's got the sort of persona, you know, you you, like, you 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 have things that take place over the month, and there are like oh. days where you can have. There's, there's like a free, you know, like in Persona, like it's like a free day, and you can go and do stuff, but you can only do certain things because you've only got a certain amount of time. Like they, it's so deep. Like I, I'm f- kind of frightened of how much you can do, but when you pull yes. it back and you just go and you go and have a battle, like those battles are still Fire Emblem and and they're still superb. And yeah, like obviously from what people will have seen, there's like a visual upgrade, and there are people I think who are going to miss the kind of almost retro themed sprites, but they they pop up in like loading screens and stuff. But generally speaking, it is um. A better looking game. It it feels good in handheld, and so far it feels good on the big screen. And also, I was quite surprised to see how much of it's voice acted because that's not, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Um, yes. Well, I don't. I don't so know. Obviously, with you playing it in previous sense, um, yes. how like is it set in a school? So what? Where else is it set? Do you get, have you seen quite a bit of what the world has to offer? Or is it kind I of can't limited talk at the minute? about that stuff. No, I just wondered just if you've been yet. there in the preview. I, 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 that was all. No, That's not fine. in the preview. In the, in the preview we, we sense, risk like, battles take place in in the world you're in. Um, they're like it, you can you can rec- it looks like you can poach or recruit, I suppose, pupils from the other houses. Like okay. there's there's sort of there's a lot of. So, so like the, it, you, you go up to someone and you can just you, on your free days you can just wander around chatting to the students and 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 just learn about the students and develop relationships with with people and and I don't know like it's just it, there's this thing where you can recruit them but they say oh yeah no I really like what you're doing but um, I'm not quite ready yet and then it'll tell you this is what you need to do like these are the criteria to be able to recruit them and it'll be stuff you you know you, you can't do yet or you can do and and and. I mean, there's fishing in this game, like because you know it's a Japanese RPG, so of course, of course, there's fishing. Um, I, I don't, I just is, I don't, is it's, there like a, a proper story as well? Or is yes, it, I mean, yes. the last Fire Emblem I played was I think on the GameCube, possibly. Jesus, um, no, there is there's definitely a story, um, quite an intriguing one, um, but I can't really go into it just yet. But but like I say, the early early sections are like uh, quite interesting. Uh, but I, I will say, if you're going to buy it, which you know we will review it. Obviously, I am reviewing it, and we will talk more about it on the podcast when I can in a couple of weeks or whenever, whenever it is. Um, what I would say is be prepared for a lot more reading. There is it is a very text heavy, and there's a lot to explain. Um, a lot of it, it feels a little overwhelming at first, but then when you're actually playing it, there's enough of a simple baseline of okay. I know how to do this part of the game. It's a turn-based tactics game um, that I think they set you up very early by seeding a lot of these deep mechanics. And I feel like at some point they're going to come back and, and they're there if you want them, if you know what I mean. like yeah. Initially, it doesn't seem like you need all that depth, but I'm guessing you will eventually. 
Uh, I, I'm I'm really in really I'm really enjoying it, and I I was one of these that I was like Jesus, they're they're putting out a lot of Fire Emblem games, but kind of like a lot of Nintendo stuff. It's like oh, but this one's on the Switch, so it's going to be a bit better looking because it's not a 3DS game, mm. um, you know. And and I was it snuck up on me how excited I was to be playing it, and I am I basically want to get this podcast done so I can go and carry on playing it. So you know, that's <laughs> in a preview sense, I am very much enjoying it, but also. It's a huge game, so like, don't take what I've said now as anything definitive at all. As I say, this is a preview, you know. So yeah, well, um, it's good that you're enjoying it. I'm looking forward to kind of. I, I really am because I'm, yeah. I'm looking for a. I'm looking for. I've been like inches away from from purchasing Octopath Traveler, but I think I want to just hang fire and wait till you know we. I find out more about this because it's. I mean, I'd I th- I, th- I thoroughly recommend Octopath, but. That's yeah, also I just, a very I, I've long not game. Had a, I, I really want a JRPG on the Switch, and I haven't got one yet. And I just want to chip away at something, and I'm so I'm I'm being cautious of what to get. But yeah, it sounds good. Well, you know what we need is Persona is Five. Just, just saying. Yeah. Well, we need Persona Five on Switch. Is what we need. <laughs> oh well, well actually, I don't need that right now. But eventually, <laughs> oh, they're, they're not going to do Switch. that now. No, they're, they're, nah, nah, they're not going to. No. Um, but let's let's, let's stick probably with do the previews. A, their own. Go on, go on guys. And so they'll probably do like a Switch exclusive Persona at some point. Well, I mm. but they are re-, re was it Royal Royal Edition? I don't know, but that's not coming to Switch. But let's let's stick with the previews. Um, and Gary, is the game you preview just called Grid? Yes. Yes, it is. is- because you mentioned that the director was it said it's a remake. Yep. That seems weird. Yeah, but na- now I'm not so sure because like they released some like more info um sort of alongside the preview stuff, and it sounds like they're almost trying to undo that. Like say it's what it's, undo it, like calling und- it. A- like, say it's not a remake. It's almost like it's kind of the game. You know. A- it's an experience that you're used to, but it's a new style, a new take on so, it. So, um, like, the first game was called Race Driver Grid. Yes. The second game was Grid 2. Yeah, then there's Grid Art of Sport. So which... why isn't this Grid 3 or, or 4? Or, or... I, think I don't get the why I... they're calling this just Grid. I think the idea is... It's... I think when he said it was a remake, I'm wondering now whether he meant a reboot, because that's kind of what it felt like, because... Like when when you you look at the um, cause when we went to the preview, they had the full career screen up. You could see all the different events. You know, there was when's it out actually? Uh, October. It was oh, September. Wow, okay. but it pushed. Got, yeah, they pushed. Interesting it back that it seems from what you said it sounds like it's kind of done. Yeah, I mean, the basically, I mean, like they are mostly the way done. It's a lot of it now is just crushing bugs and stuff because there were a few. I mean, mm-hmm. I. I I think I was the unlucky one at the event because well, <laughs> mine crashed about four times. Like, wow. I was just like, what I think I was PC? cursed. Uh, no, they're Xbox, and they were they were very oh, wow. yeah they were very like look even showed us behind the sort of the, oh really the yeah it's like look no no they are running on Xboxes. <laughs> uh, they did have PC okay. versions there as well with the wheel set up. Um, which I had to go at, but I'm shit at a wheel at the moment. I'm still learning. Especially uh, so on I a did... game you're unfamiliar with. Well, I'm not a, a, a new game, you know. Yeah, that's it. Because, I mean, the, the grid games, they've never really been, like, full sim or anything. So they're, they're a little bit lighter than you'd expect. You know, like, the cars are lighter than you'd expect. So when you're using a wheel, you know, you're expecting, oh, if I turn it this much, the car's going to sort of gradually move. But it's a little bit more twitchy with grid because it's... I've never, I've never got on with wheels because I don't. The thing is, is you, first of all, I was like, these don't, this is not how a car feels. Yeah. But then what you have to sort of realize is, but you've never driven a car at these speeds, yeah, consistently. So, but like, so, so strangeness around reboot or, or or name. I do think the name of it is a pain in the ass. It's but hey, <laughs> like. You, I, I mean, I know the answer because I've read your preview and I edited the video of you talking about it. Like, it's what you wanted from Grid three, four, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of when when I sat down to play it, 
like I, I'll be honest like I think everyone else I saw they were going straight for the capture it's like yeah I'm gonna capture this now I was like I just want to I want to have a go you just want to play first. yeah yeah so it's like the the first race I captured was actually my second go at the game I, I just sort of sat down and went right I'm gonna just choose a car choose a track and I'm just gonna have a go just see what it's like and that that explains why like in them videos I edited you were only like a bit bad at it <laughs> <laughs> that's it and like that first like the one with the stock car, um, that was the one, that was my second race. And it's like my first go on that track because that Shanghai right. track is brand new. Um, yeah. As was that stock car as well. Yeah. And it's just like stock cars aren't built for race tracks. You know, they're built for ovals. Um, yes. They do, I mean, they do do some track racing in like NASCAR uh-huh. and stuff, but it's it's very specific tracks and stuff like that. And I I struggled. <laughs> I really struggled, but it kind of enough. made for like you know you got to sh- see some of the stuff that you you'd normally see. Um, oh, you know, well, players, most players would normally see, not the high level ones that will just piss all over anyone. Try to play it anyway. Uh, but yeah, like when I got in the Camaro and tried like the track again, I started like learning it a bit better and got more of a handle for the the handling um and yeah i mean i I came away feeling like i played a new grid game you know what i mean it's like i i loved grid 2 and i loved grid auto sport even though neither of them were quite good enough when it came to like race driver grid is still the best of the lot um it just, I don't know, I can't really put into words exactly what it is, but there was something about that game that hit all the right notes. Mm. Um, and they just couldn't quite replicate it with the others. But this one does, at least, obviously this is only a preview, so things could change. Yes. But it felt like playing that game again. Um, it gave me that same sort of feeling. So hopefully it'll stay that way and I'll I'll get, a really enjoyable game in October, but I guess we'll have to see on that front. Well, let's stick with, I hope, because I know how excited you are about it, really enjoyable games. And you have, I believe, played all of Bloodstained. Well, not all of, but you've completed Bloodstained. Technically, yeah. Um, Okay. (laughs) I played to the bad ending. Um, You know, like Symphony and I, it's got the whole, you can play it first, you can complete it, but you don't get the real ending. You've got to do this, that, and the other to finish it. Mm. And I was like, "Eh, I didn't want to. Um, How long did it take you? uh, It's about eight hours. Oh, that's all right. I was was wondering if I'll go back to it because I heard it was well over 10. And it's like, "Mm." well, I mean, yeah, I mean, to get to get to that ending, it was about eight hours. If you, I looked up how, because I was just like, can I be bothered playing anymore? Um, and I was like, I'll look up what you need to do to get the proper ending. I was like, this looks like it's going to be another eight hours. And I was like, I just don't think I can, I've, I've got it in me. Um, okay. it's like the gameplay is good. Like the gameplay felt like Castlevania, you know, it was more like the sort of the 3DS, not 3DS, the DS games. Sorry. It felt like them, which they were great. You know, and I, mm. I was enjoying it, but there was just something about it that just didn't feel right. And it was things like there was the cut scenes. They're, they're quite, you know, few and far between, but they just didn't feel finished. And it just somehow cheapened the experience. And when I'm not going to spoil it, but when I beat this other boss, you don't really get credits or anything like that. You just get a small scene and then game over. And I was like, oh. You know, it didn't even feel mm. like there was any kind of reward for it, any kind of payoff. It was just, all right, reload the game and carry on. You know, so basically, mm-hmm. if you were someone who hadn't saved before going to the boss, I don't know where you'd be put. <laughs> you know, you, maybe oh. you could have lost like an hour's worth of game. Um, you can do that in that game easily. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, it's very buggy as well. I mean, it crashed on me a number of times. Where did um, you end up playing it? Uh, I went on the Xbox. You did, okay. Yeah, like I don't know about you, but I, I was I was talking to Mikhail about this. Um, I found it very frustrating because apparently, what one of the problems with the frame rate is that the game tries to output native 4K. Right. And because it's doing that, the frame rate struggles. 
if, if this kind of game, I would be quite happy with 1080p. Yeah. And a really smooth frame rate and no drops. And I'm, I, 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 I'm disappointed that that option is not there. That it's yeah, like you're having it's... 4K and you'll have the performance hit. I was like, well, I don't. What? Yeah, also, I mean, what? this game should be able to do 4K without it, a performance it hit. It sure does. I mean, it's not. It's not a bad looking game or anything like that, but no, it's, it's got not, style. Yeah, it's not a game which looks like it's that intensive. So how it's managing to have all these performance issues even on an X, I don't I don't quite understand. No. I I mean I I do want to go back to it. I, well, Chris, you haven't have you you haven't have you played Bloodstone? No, unfortunately not yet. Um I want to, but I, uh, I haven't played it yet, unfortunately not, no. Okay. But yeah, I mean, again, what, 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 where would you sit, Gaz? Like, I mean, what did Mick give it? Was it an eight? No, I can't remember what he gave it. I say but eight. Where would you sit on it? I mean, I'd probably go six or seven. I think maybe probably a six. I think it's one that... I mean, like I say, I, I technically didn't finish it. You know, I didn't play, like... To, to get the real ending, so it could get miles better doing that. I, I'm not exactly gonna defend it for that because you know if yeah. you've played for eight hours and it's like no, you need to play another eight for it to work. Um, mm. But I think it's a game that if it had, I know it was delayed a lot, but I feel like if it had been given another couple of months, I think maybe we might have got to get the game that we we expected or we yeah, wanted. You want, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit well, of a shame because it's there's potential there. It's potentially a good game, but it's just yeah, there's something not right. Well, Chris, Chris White, Chris hey. of House White, oh, talk yes. to me about Mario Maker. Okay, um, <laughs> so I'm very much enjoying it, very much so. I've good. spent a little bit of time in the single player thing. Um, yeah, but I've just uh, like it's 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 amazing just to kind of just play through all these different levels for like the different Mario games. Like that's like I, I never. I mean, I played the one on the DS, but I didn't okay. play it loads. Like I bought it. Like we bought it for my daughter at the time. Well, she's still my daughter. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I bought it for her when uh, yeah when when it it came out, and then I'm I'm a sucker for kind of hype. So when everyone's going on about it, and then I got when I basically when I went to play, um, some of it at that event, and Preview I just event, wasn't it? yeah, I just like I just got a taste for it, and uh, yeah, man, mm. I, I'm really enjoying it, and I, I've I've spent a bit of time creating. I'm not putting anything out until I'm 100 percent happy with it, because okay, the, some of the stuff I've seen and played like is nuts. <laughs> like there's some really creative people on there um so i'm still working on my my debut but i'm just i'm just having a lot of fun with it i think it's a great little game and there's whenever you get to play old school mario you know it's always good yep. and especially the way it looks it, yeah i think it's hey. top man I, I really like it gaz you've been playing it too i believe yeah i've been playing it um i've actually done most of the story as well I'll rather yeah I've I've got to the point where you've finished the the, the building sort of stuff, but I wanted to get because I, I I did release a level with the Mario Land that you know okay. the the flower the power up thing for that. Um, oh, which, the yeah. th- that's the one of the things we weren't allowed to talk about under embargo. Right, because then it's like you you couldn't get that until you did something you later on in the, the story. Yeah, that's that's um, right. Yep. Yeah, but. Uh, I wanted specifically to do that because I had an idea to see if it would work. Um, mm. But no, the the levels in that, the single player, are really good anyway. And Yeah, they are. Y- you can tell they've got some, like, some of the influence from other players, like the levels they mm-hmm. made in the original, because some of the ideas that they use are like, I've seen this in m- the original Mario Maker, you know, and stuff like that. So they've they've definitely taken some influence from there but some of the levels of people have put out are ridiculous like ridiculously are, good yeah. like so, some are dead simple as well i mean it's even just like the speed run ones some of those they're just very creative for uh, something that takes like less than a minute 
I mean, this um, this won't be of appeal to Gary, but Chris, like, the, I believe one of the designers or devs on Celeste is making levels in that game. Oh, you um, joker! <laughs> nah, so, so, oh, that's, so that's cool. kind of cool. And like the first three or four of them are like super. They get more and more creative, and I I, I dig it. Like I, I'll try and find the the maker ID and send you it. But, yeah. Um, Oh, man, yeah, I mean, that's, that's... I've kind of reverted just to make to uh, my son made a level which I shared on Twitter, but I've just been playing them because, yeah, like, I I found the making to be unsatisfying because of what I spoke about last week with the you know you just yeah I don't know it's just your levels don't seem to get played unless you've got like this enormous social following that you can kind yeah. of you know and that's that's a shame. Yeah, um, let's let's get into some listener correspondence this week. So there's plenty to get into. Thomas at Llama Fluff has got a few questions. We've got a few questions from a few different listeners this week. And Thomas kicks it off with, what's your favourite type of bread? He says, I like a tiger loaf. Ooh, tiger loaf is Mm. good. I like a seeded seeded batch. What's that? So it's just like a a multi-seed wholemeal kind of bread. Oh, okay. What's the the, the batch part? That's just what it's called. It's like, um, I can't remember who makes it, but it's essentially just lots of different types of seed in a wholemeal loaf. Okay. Um, it's very tasty. So it's nice with just butter, oh, to be fair. Okay. But um, yeah, I'll go with a multi-seed. I think okay. I'd be... Uh, I think I'd be on the same... same wavelength as Thomas myself. I do love a tiger loaf. I, I, but you can't... Gaz, you're breaking character a little bit, really, mate. You kind of <laughs> should just be saying, like, a plain white loaf. Oh, yeah, you just want me to say... Yeah, Process. Yeah, 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 I love just wolf's white bread. Yeah, but but not, but to be not fair, fresh right? because you don't want the white chemicals bread. in the... <laughs> White bread is nice. Get a, get a nice doorstop it, loaf. Yeah. Whack it in the toast. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'd, I'd say white bread gets the best toast. Mm. Well, we'll get to that. We'll come, <laughs> we'll, we'll come to the next question. I, I would actually say a tiger loaf as well. But uh, do you know what I think? I suppose this is a very specific type, but that's what he's asking. Do you know what? It's, it's no good for toasting and it's only really good for lunch boxes. I do like a crusty roll. Just a nice crusty oh, roll with some cheese in it. Um, cup, yeah. Let's not get into regional dialects here because <laughs> I don't know if that's the same thing. I, I, it's just a crusty roll, like a, a white crusty roll. I, I, you know, if you push your hand down on it, it will loads of bread will fall off because it's crusty on the top, uh, but also mm. quite soft on the bottom to give a real. Yeah, no, I, I could go for a crusty roll right now. Um, he also wants to know about toast. He says, "What's the secret to making perfect toast, and what do you put on it?" Uh, Chris, we we'll go. We we'll go with you again. Oh, toast is like the the ultimate food. I, 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 the I ultimate like, form um, of bread. I like put a bit, of to- put a bit of bread in the toast. The toast in it just because I have it on two like two not cycles, but basically it pop it down. It comes up very like lightly toasted, and then the next mm-hmm. one, it's got I can like. I can choose when to pop it out just on based on what I like, but I tend to do it once down, whack it under the grill, put some cheese on. So I like my cheese on toast, but then I also like putting pate wow. on, like Brussels pate on on some toast. I def- I'm with you on the pate, but the idea of toasting it in a toaster and an oven is some is the kind of extravagant even I can't get behind. That's yeah, but it's <laughs> it's the the payoff is more than worth it. Ah, but that's a lot of work for a bit of toast. It is, but. I've got a question okay. for you, Adam, re- related to toast, just quickly. Does your sure. dog go crazy when you put, use a toaster? No. Mine goes fucking nuts. Not a- I don't know what it is. Really? But she, she like, she she hears it, and then she just, she, like, jumps up, pounces in the air and dies on her nose, and then starts headbutting the floor and sniffing the floor, and then nah, she just mate, whines. Some, some, your kids have fed that. Your kids have fed that dog toast. <laughs> <laughs> they they fed that dog out. toast because my dog, but, my dog goes nuts for certain things. It's like he, he likes carrots. So if if Claire's like, or I am, well, I, no, I say I. Let's not fucking pretend. If Claire's like <laughs> shaving some carrots off, then like he starts to sit there because. And, and the other thing as well is my dog. I tell you that he can fucking hear an egg cracking from a mile away. <laughs> that dog knows an eggshell cracking. Um, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's no. not fussed about toast. Well, if uh, anyone Gaz, listening does what's have your a dog that's mental, toast? let me know. Yeah, if, <laughs> <laughs> toast dog. Uh, <laughs> Gaz, that's perfect toast. And what do you put on it? Uh, I am. Go- I am gonna 
play Gaz on this one. <laughs> okay, I do just put butter on it. Uh, but uh, I'm it's, not it's just anti like, that. I, I, no, I do no. love just like a good fucking big slab kind of, you know, we're talking proper door yeah. stop. Uh, oh, and yeah. I just wh- whack it under the grill. I don't use a toaster. Whack it under the grill. I don't, I don't do it too much, but I do it just enough so it's nice and sort of golden brown. Whack a bit of butter on it, so let it melt right into it, mm. and just yeah. fucking have at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know? I, I think we've used the phrase "have at it" for a podcast title before, so <laughs> I, I've, I'm pretty sure. Um, do you know? The th- so, so the thing is, right? I'm actually with Gary here. A caveat: if it's fresh bread, like you know, one you've sliced yourself, then I'm yeah. going with with butter. I'm just going to say apps because you want the. The butter as it melts through because with 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 a fresh loaf you don't get the even toasting because you kind of can't because the bread's cut and it's uneven so you get these crispier bits and softer bits and that's fine with fresh bread if i'm going you know just standard like a, a hovis or king's mill loaf or even a tesco's own brand which is what we have these days i probably go peanut butter and i probably go smooth and i go one and a half times through the toaster because my toaster tends to heat three quarters of the toast more than the bottom quarter well i'd say two thirds and then there's like a third that's less toasted so the second time out i turn the toast over so it gets a full coating um a full toasting and probably peanut butter i will say you know on toasters you have the the, the dials for the numbers Mm -hmm. yeah do you know what they're for I can't say uh, it. Are, they, are they for different like... types of bread products like bagels no. and crumpets? And... No, no. no. Like if no, it's like just like a, a dial like that that's sometimes. one through five, yeah. is it what? Sometimes it can be for like thickness. So I've been told. I thought it was a heat setting. Okay, like you know how. Yeah. So like another, and it kind of is in a way because what I've been told it is, is if you've got a dial that's like one through five, it's how long you want it toasted for. Uh, so if your toast's not yeah, quite getting toasted sense. on, you know, I've not timed it, but I, I mean, it's not exciting. Um, <laughs> but I just thought, I'd, you know, if 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 we have to share wisdom in, on this podcast, uh, sticking with the food because we are, after all, a food-related podcast. Thomas wants to know what food can you no longer eat. I'm old now, so this is him speaking, but I, I same applies, I suppose. I'm <laughs> old now, but he says if he visits the chippy, he's <laughs> just sad. Um, I'm ill for about two days, and it makes me sad. Too old for this shit applies to so many foods now. <laughs> mm. um, probably uh, what, uh, an Indian from a restaurant. I know that sounds okay. odd, but like if I have like a takeaway Indian, I'm fine. But I've been to two Indian restaurants in my lifetime. Both times, I've been violently ill afterwards. <laughs> and I, I, the, like, there's a place. Sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to laugh at that a bit. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, well, it's f- fine, whatever. A bit mean. I'm not crying on the inside. But I did, there's a place I did called <laughs> Slice of India, and I went there, and it was. It, I mean, it was probably my fault, just because they're, they're like a buffet Indian, so I fucking went nuts, um, and had at it. And then I remember getting in, getting in, going to bed, waking up. But being violently sick and then playing on Metal Gear Solid 2. And then the other time, I did exactly the same. I, I went home, went to sleep, was fine, woke up in the night and vomited. So I, I've never gone back to an Indian. So, yeah, probably a, a proper Indian from a restaurant. Well, that's, that's about it. I eat pretty much anything else. <laughs> I think I think for me... See, I don't think there's anything I can, I can no longer eat. But I think there are things I shouldn't eat because, I like, hey... I'm not R- going to call them out on it. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> we're in that territory. We're, we're going down that, that canal. Um, Anal. Oh. The lights are off in this one. But, like, oh. it, I don't think I've had a it's McDonald's in the needed, last Adam. five years. No, I know. I don't think I've had a McDonald's <laughs> in the last five years that hasn't the following day give me horrendous shits. Oh, really? Um I don't yeah. know if it's the, the, the chip fat or the, the, the meats they use, but I don't think I can have a beef burger from McDonald's without the following day having the shits. It doesn't oh. stop me having them, I should point out. I still am partial. You know, some, sometimes sometimes you want just garbage food. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but sometimes as humans, you just want the thing you crave the most is the thing you know that you should least have, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, Gaz, how about you? Anything? 
Uh, I mean, they've not. He's he's made just eggs. Like I can't have eggs anymore. That's just, see, that would be the end for me. That it was weird. It's like I used to have them all the time as a kid. And Can stuff you like have that, but... things with eggs in them? Yeah, that's the weird thing. Like, well, you I just mean, can't eat eggs, like egg on toast or egg, yeah, like a boiled the, egg, like, or yeah. If it's like, I don't know, like a cake or something like that, it's obviously like used you, yeah. egg to make. That's fine. It's just actual eggs. Just no, can't so, do it anymore. So, like, so what? A, this is just perhaps a silly question. What about an omelet with like a cheese om- cheese and ham omelet? Because that is obviously predominantly no. eggs. No. Yeah, that those those oh, are off limits as well. So when you have like a full English or full Irish, as we have cottoned it the other week, that cooked <laughs> breakfast, you can't have a boiled egg or a fried egg, a, a poached egg. You, you can't have scrambles, scramblers. No, bo- no, no egg anymore. It's got in. I used to love a nice fried egg. Oh, I mean, as, a, as a northern lad, that must be horrific. Don't don't northerners like eggs, or have I just made that up on the spot? Oh, I mean, my 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 dad loves eggs. Like, I mean, I'm a southerner like, and I love eggs. But I, I mean, I think eggs tend to be a a love of many people. It's just you know. Oh, they're great. They even look it, good. Like not being funny when you t- when you boil an egg and it's just do you know just it's just there and you take the shell off. It's just they even look good, man. They look great. <laughs> Eggs are great. I'm sorry, Gary. I, I, I can't even make a joke about it, man. I'm really sorry to hear this. <laughs> devastating. It's like I, devastating I mean, it's not, it's, the world with this news. <laughs> it's not. It's not a food. But do you uh, do you know the alcoholic beverage Blue Wicked? Yeah. Chris, do you know the Blue Wicked? Yes. Okay, I, I can't yeah. have them anymore because when they came out, I drank so many of them, I basically got stomach acid from them and then it got to the point where I literally would sip one and it would instantly flare up like some sort of IBS or something in stomach acid. Wow. And that, that was, I mean, I was drinking too many of them. It was, you know, they were like, they're basically like alcoholic ice pops, liquidized, aren't they? So, yeah. I suppose um, that's no major loss. I suppose now you've grown no, no. up, you've, changed, you've had change in your yeah. preference of no, alcohol. I drink, no, I drink so me pink not... ciders and, and, uh, you know, they're the modern alka pop, aren't they? Strawberry yeah. and lime um, copperberg for me. Copperberg, yeah. There you go. And, and listen, if they want to sponsor us, just get in touch. Send me. <laughs> I, I, I'm shameless. Uh, Thomas's last question is actually gaming related. Uh, I could have read these the other <laughs> way around, but he says, uh-huh. "Do you think as gamers we're too busy looking ahead and we don't fully enjoy or appreciate what we have right now? Take this year as an example." He says, "Resident Evil 2, Labo VR, Sekiro, Far Cry, Yoshi. Uh, fuck me, Far Cry was this year. Yep. Nah, he's wrong there, right?" No, yep. New Dawn was this year. Yeah, yeah but he says they've all been and gone. See, yeah. see, see for me, I I didn't enjoy Far Cry very much, and no, Labo shit. VR. I have just remembered that I actually wrote a review of that we didn't publish because I forgot to send it. That's that's on me. Um, <laughs> short okay. version is it's fine. <laughs> it's 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 kind of ridiculously clever and also <laughs> ridiculously annoying. Um, that's probably something I should cut from this, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I see. I I've spent this year looking back more than I have in previous years to the point where we're in July and my game of the year. I don't know if everyone does this. I keep a game of the year list running through the year, and when something stands out for whatever section we're awarding, I whether it's good or bad, I tend to note it down, uh, and then we collate them all later in the year. But I've I've my lists are kind of empty. Um, because I spent oh, all that you, time playing Dishonored 2, you know? F- fucking realise something. I haven't mm. talked about Sea of Solitude. We'll have to save it. We're, 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 there's plenty. Of, I say there's plenty of time. Yeah, but, but um, that's no, another I'm example same. of a game that's, you know. I keep a running kind of come thing. And gone. And I think it, it's kind of Devil May Cry. Yeah. But I don't want that to be my game. Because I say, without, without, without revealing. <laughs> well, that's. It's a fantastic game, but without without revealing your list, is yours as sparsely populated as mine is, do you think? Like, I think I've got five or six games that are like, honestly, of the five or six, like three of them I would like to think they probably shouldn't make a top ten. But yeah, they are I think at the I've moment. Probably, ugh, I just, because I can't really, th- probably three games I've yeah. played this year would wow. even be close to the top ten. So it's going to be interesting. Have you played Resi 2 yet? I've played it. Well, I don't think it's top my top okay, ten. Yeah, yeah. I mean that it is in my top ten at the moment. Like, it's, I think it's like it, quite it's one high of the up. best games I've played this year. It's one of the best games I've played this year. But, but I don't, you know don't feel it's, it's actually good enough to be in a top ten. You, you're I'm hoping not. for eight more games, kind of thing. Yeah, I am. <laughs> hmm. We'll see. There must well, be more. I think we got some. Well, there is. I mean, you think we've got Astral Chain, and usually Platinum are good for a, a banger a year, and Astral you know, Chain are games amazing, to come. Yeah. 
I mean, Luigi's Mansion Astral, 3 is supposed Astral to be out this, train, way, this year. Astral Train might be in there <laughs> Astral as well. Train. Did I say that this time? Oh, no, you said know. Chain. You, you heard it right. I did say no. Chain. Okay. Uh, one of us has got to be uh, slightly <laughs> more compassmentless than the other, at least slightly more. Uh, Gaz, what about your... Like, do you... Have you you know, is there anything you've you've missed that you think, oh, I should go back at some point and pick up, you know, Far Cry or Sekiro? It's a, it's a weird one this year. I don't know. It feels like quite a barren year. Um, See, I think it's backloaded, but I'll come to that in a minute. So, so sorry, carry on, guys. I mean, no, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. I think a lot of us were waiting for E3 because there was very little leading up to it. You know, there's only. Yeah. Been, like for, for me, obviously, I'm I'm on the other side of this fence. Is that Resi Two yeah. is right up there for me? Oh, it's, it's, stay there, it's my I don't number. Know. Th- you know, there's plenty. Well, of us, but... at the moment, it's my number three. So, like, that's pretty good. You know, yeah. it's it's just. I mean, I think for for us, it's it's quite difficult because we're constantly having to play the latest games and stuff like that. You yeah. know, we're obviously reviewing them all the time, and um, so there's the there's kind of that about it, but I mean, I, I'll be honest, like this year, I can't think of many games that have been and gone that I'm like, oh, I'd love to have played that. You know, I just, what I, I, what know. I would say, what I would say, right, is is I do agree with that, but I do think this year there's some absolute, potentially incredible games to still to come. Oh, yeah. So, okay. for example, yeah. if I'm looking at the list now, for example, and we've got Wolfenstein Youngblood still to come this month, I, and I, I I am excited for that, I'm sorry I'm, to say. I just am completely indifferent to that for some reason. Okay. I don't okay. know why. I mean, well, I, I, I just I think that's going to be a banger. Um, for, to be fair, though, for me, I still think uh, New Order is the best of that series. I, I, that's cracking. I, as much as I enjoyed Wolfenstein 2, I just don't think it ever quite hit the same heights. Mm. Um, but maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just... I don't know. It, it didn't disappoint me, but maybe there was just that little tinge of disappointment that it wasn't as good as New Order or something, and maybe that's factored in. I, I don't mean, know, looking, but... looking ahead to August then, right? So Madden comes out at the beginning of August, which is usually the kind of the klaxon of games are coming. And so I'm not saying Madden's going to be a, a contender, but, you know... We start in a warm up like that rad game from Double Fine, um, which lukewarm preview, so I'm not going to include that. But then we get to the sort of late stages of August, and you've got Control, and I'm staking it now, saying I think that's going to be an absolute superb game. Uh, but we've also three days later got Astral Chain, and Blair Witch, and the Dark Pictures Man of Medan. Now, while the Dark Pictures Man of Medan sounds like a terrible game title, <laughs> remember you got to remember who that is. Yeah. yeah, they made well, that's super massive. Like, you know? I, I was surprised. Like it looks like it, I'm guessing it's going to be a small, like episode thing because it's one. It's, it's one of five cheap. planned games. Yeah, I, I um, thought it, there were going to be like five sort of big full games, but looking at the pricing for it, it looks like it's going to be quite cheap. So I'm assuming maybe like sort of movie length kind of thing. Yeah, you know, but. but but like that, will, I think that will be great. I think Astral Chain will be great. I'm not saying either will be Game of the Year contenders, but with Control as well, I'm saying there's three potential listers there. And yeah. I think like you know Blair Witch, I'm just an intrigued to see what mm, that is. Very much so. Is that this um, year? Yeah, that's August 30th, mate. Yeah, Jeez, I know. I, I somehow missed that, but yeah. But I when I saw that at the the E3 thing, I was like, that actually looks really looking good. I mean, I, mean, when, like, when... I know they didn't really show like gameplay, but I was like, the, just no, the idea. Well, of you a... don't know. But like when I mean, we get into September, though, right? Seriously, we're talking like pants shitting time because you've got Monster, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, which right isn't a game, but still, you have got Pez, or sorry, as it's now called, eFootball Pro Evolution Soccer 2020, the same day as Gears Five, right? There's there's two games there that like Pez and Gears have been top teners in the years past. I am ready for both of those. I'm certainly ready for Pez to get back where it should be. The following week, or even the same week, on the 13th, we have. On the same day, Borderlands 3, Damon X, Damon Cross Machina, which, all right, yeah. Grid, NHL 20, okay? Oh, Grid then, was moved back, remember? Oh, sorry, it was, yeah, that sorry, was, you're quite right. That, that yeah, was sorry, you pre- said, yeah. Yeah, that was precisely the reason, because he yeah, said, like, I mean, he didn't want to go up against Gears and Borderlands, that it was just, like, suicide, basically. Yes. But, like, you know, September 20th, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Ugh. you know? And the Switch Lite now, as well. And the Switch Lite. Uh, you know, later on in September, you've got uh, The Surge 2, 
which all right again probably not gonna be a game of the year contender you've got code vein you've got fifa 20 which i'm very excited to see mm. um we move into october ghost recon breakpoint um yep. modern I'm warfare like which yeah which one sorry oh, oh, breakpoint, yeah, yeah 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 yeah, uh, you got Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Medieval, The Outer Worlds. Uh, these these are all potentially good games. You know, you've got uh, Death Stranding in November, Pokemon, and Star Wars on the same goddamn day, oh, God. which is just <laughs> unkind. I'll say it, and I'm not even going to make a joke about it. Shenmue Three. Uh, I fuck fuck <sighs> Shenmue Three. Oh my god! Uh, but then then November twenty second, you got Doom Eternal, which. I- Ooh, please yes. don't slip. Please don't slip. And also Mario and the Sonic at the Olympic Games, which looks really good. Um, yeah. You know, and th- that's that's a lot of games potentially not, that are very good. We've not had the release date for Luigi's Mansion yet, which no, is supposed Q4, to be this year. Apparently, but, uh, I still but, think that has got to be an October release, surely. It's like I it's think so too, made yeah. for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. What I will say, by the way, is Thomas asked, as gamers, are we too busy looking ahead? <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. not at all. Um, no, mm. we would never dream of doing that. <laughs> Daryl Baxter at Daryl Baxter says, uh, "We'll go with you, Chris. Thoughts on Onimusha?" That's all he says. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, Deserves the, the Resi the, Two the, treatment. Oh, it does because mm-hmm. that the, yes. the, when it came out, what did I play? Was it just like a remastered version of the original? Was it? Yeah. You reviewed you know, that, I reviewed. yeah. The on yeah, PS4. I, I really enjoyed going back to that, but yeah, it fucking hell, it needs a sorting out control wise. Yeah. Just it needs that bit more freedom, and I'd love to see it like the Resi engine, definitely. So, but no, I'd it's, like it's, to it's, see it's it. Good little franchise. Yeah, I'd like to see it come back. I don't think there's room for it at the moment. If I'm honest with you, no. Uh, he he wants to also know, Gary. Where's my? He didn't specify you, but I am. Where's my purple Joy Cons? <laughs> I I I do love purple. I yeah. I would like some purple Joy Cons. I want. I, I was too. one that I wanted them to release. You know when they released that Fortnite Xbox, the purple one. Yeah. I was like, release that controller on its own. I'd have that. I mean, I know technically I could just go and make one on that Xbox I controller suppose. thing, but I'm like, eh, I can't bother with that. It's <laughs> just if some I could just the, buy one, then maybe some of the the like the mock-ups for Switch Lite designs have been amazing. Like, why aren't Nintendo <laughs> doing them? One that looks like a Game Boy Advance, but like you know. Oh. Um, speak, speaking of, he also says uh, this is again Daryl Baxter on Twitter. What's your idea of a Switch Pro? Who wants to take that? I don't. I just don't know if it's gonna work if they did do one. But I mean, if they did. I mean, it's Nintendo. I just don't even see them going for the 4K. What? Do I they just need think they don't need so... it. Yeah, that's no, yeah. I mean, not for a good I few think years. It'd be, I mean, maybe go to. Cause it's not 1080p, is it? The Switch. Well, so some games are, yeah, but a lot yeah. of them aren't. But maybe that would be like the standard, um, better battery life stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't know what, if you could do a Switch Pro. I think you can. And I'm going to tell you how. And I'm going to tell you right now, Nintendo, if you do this, I want my cut. So the Switch <laughs> is what... We know what the Switch is. Everyone knows what the Switch is. Now we know what the Switch Lite is. And the Switch Lite is removing the dock and making it a handheld-only device. With me so far, gentlemen, I am about to pitch to you the thing you didn't know you needed until you knew you, knew you needed the thing. Um, there were barely words in there. The Switch Pro, I'm going to suggest to you, Nintendo executives, is to go the complete opposite direction. Remove the touchscreen... Console only goes under your television. You still get the Joy Cons, and you both go back. Basically, it's a combination of the Wii and the Wii U. It's a console only with no touchscreen, just a Pro controller and a box that goes under your telly. Because of that, there's no worry about you undocking it, so they don't have to you know, de- develop for the lower end. It's 1080p. It's kind of the equivalent of PS4 Pro's boost mode, and it gets games like, say, Xenoblade Chronicles running smoother and looking better because they have higher res textures. That, my dears, is the Switch Pro. Well done. Uh, uh, should we uh, should we applaud? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, what, what other way do they go? They're, they're, they're not. I can't see that they make a Switch that's still a Switch that could be docked, no, but it's just more different. powerful. Fuck, fuck it. I don't no one would buy it. No one would buy it. 
I don't want it. I just I like the. I, I the want the Switch Lite. Now. I want the Switch Lite, but I, I don't think anyone would buy a Switch Pro if it's what yeah, I said it was. But that doesn't see, stop I'm them not, from I'm, stealing I'm not my ideas. Like the Switch Lite either. Like I just like having the oh, ability to take it out and shove it in. It'd be Whenever I want. Now. <laughs> yep. I mean, we all like that, Chris, but that ain't the world we live in, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the Switch Lite, I would like, I'd like to, I, I, hopefully we will get to review one because I want to feel how that console feels with non-detachable Joy-Cons because it does always feel a bit wobbly, especially when you've used them a lot. Um, I'd like to, I don't think worries me so small a screen. I don't know. I, I, I want a Switch Lite. I want the yellow one. Sorry. I like you tech. So, uh, Tony Sibley at Tone T O N E Sibley. What are the? This is a. Str- I read this question twice, and I feel that I'm. Am I going to be the odd one out? He says, as a, f- a foodie question, what are the collective thoughts on vinegar? As long as the food is hot, and I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read it slowly. As long as the food is hot, I add a bit of vinegar. Can't have chicken without it, and goes best on pizza. It brings out the flavour. My wife used to mock me until she tried it, and now I see her sneakily adding it to two things. He adds vinegar to chicken and pizza. Uh, I, I, I got nothing on that. <laughs> Just... I, I like vinegar. I, I mean, I, I like it. A nice bit of vinegar on chips. On chips, yeah. Awesome. I yeah. fucking hate vinegar. <laughs> Chris. Really don't like it. I'm sorry. Never have. Never it's, have liked it. It's, but you know what? Shame. If he wants to put it on pizza, fucking well done, mate. If, I'm, if, I'm if not going to. If, if we're yeah. kind of going Ugh, to that, then we've always got Adam Carroll's disgusting food habits. Well, I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming, that, I'm He's assuming Adam gonna Carroll. Trump. I'm assuming Adam Carroll he, thinks vinegar's a soft drink. He has like, it. You know, oh, yeah. I, ice cream. He love it on <laughs> oh. <laughs> Banana split. Could you freeze a bit of vinegar. vinegar on it? Could you hang on? Could you freeze vinegar and say to someone, "Here, have this lemonade lollipop"? Oh, oh, would that? Would yeah, that you work? Could. Could you, could you, can I'm you, sure you can freeze, freeze vinegar? That w- and follow up question um, for a friend: Would it be cruel to do that to children? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers everything. Um, I'll tell I'll tell my friend that they shouldn't do that. Uh, I, I yeah, like I'm not going to vinegar shame him. Like if you want to put vinegar on your pizza, then you you do that, mate. You live your best life. But to me, it's kind of uh, if if you're doing a simple like chicken nuggets and chips and beans, you know, just a brown meal, then I would probably because I'd cook the you know throw the chips and the and the, and the nuggets in together, and I'd, I'd splash a bit of vinegar on all the fried sort of stuff, you know, and the, the, yeah. the, that's that's as far as I would, you know. White wine vinegar and, and stuff and balsamic on other foods, but generally speaking, no, nah, I'm not sort of just slopping a load of vinegar on me, 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 me meal, really. Sorry, Tone. Yeah, I guess we've not tried it. it maybe he's right, but I don't know. Well, I, I, I'll have to really die not to knowing, it. Gaz. I'll have to die not knowing, mate. That's all I'll say on that subject. I don't. I. I mean. When it's, does he just does he definitely just mean like malt vinegar? Because a, a bit of balsamic on top of a pizza that's got some some, some you know herbs and sort of basil on it. Like I get that. Um, maybe that's it. Maybe he's he's not specifying because he has different vinegars. You know, maybe. You know, if, if he's a vinegar connoisseur, then absolutely, I I'm with you on that. I just I guess it's uh, maybe it's on us that we just assumed he meant just malt vinegar. Maybe we're the bad people. <laughs> Maybe. Hmm. And there's a thought to go out on. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the podcast this week. I do apologise if there's been any sort of weird noises. I've noticed some stuff being picked up on the waveform that I didn't recognise, so maybe it was just a, a bee flew by and I didn't notice, but um, apologies for that. Uh, a podcast, obviously, every Wednesday. Don't forget, we'll be here next Wednesday. But if you want it early, if you want to hear the dulcet tones of myself, Chris, and Gary early, you can go to patreon.com slash God is a geek. And for example, this one's going to be super early. You're going to get it cough, three or four days before everyone else. And that's $1 a month, which is about 80p. Um, so over a year, you're barely paying a £10 for supporting us. You get code giveaways. Actually, we're overdue to do one of them. We'll do another one of them soon. You get access to our Discord channel where we chat about 
well, games, but in text form rather than podcast. We get early access to videos like the, we, the vlogs we've been doing. There's, there's, there's loads of them already available as we dole them out wide. But um, yeah, that, that's enough of a pivot. It really helps us keep going. Like there is it's content coming up on one of the biggest video games of the year thanks to being able to pay someone to go and play that game in a different country that isn't England. So it really helps. Uh, Chris, Gary, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And we will speak to you next week or whenever you choose to listen. Bye-bye for now. (laughs) 